In the last tutorial, we covered the toolbar on the left-hand side of the screen. In this tutorial, I'm going to go into greater detail on the Shape Tools and on the Contour Tool, plus cover the difference between using an outline versus the contour. So let's start with the Rectangle Tool. Just click and drag to make a rectangle. If I hold down my Control button on my keyboard while I'm making this, it will make a perfect square. If I hold down my Shift button, while I'm making it, it will make the rectangle out from the center of the shape versus the corner. If I hold down both my control and shift button at the same time, it will make a perfect square from the center. If I switch to my shape tool, I can change the corners of my rectangles. If I click and drag on my corners, I can make them rounded. I can see up in my property bar that I can change my corners from round to scalloped or chamfered. If I hold down my control button while I am dragging my corners, I can change just one corner. Right now, you can see that my relative corner scaling button is selected. That means if I resize my rectangle after I have added rounded corners, the corners will size relative to the size of my rectangle. If I deselect the relative corner scaling button, it will keep my corners an absolute size even as I scale my rectangle up and down. Under the rectangle tool, I have the three point rectangle tool. This is very similar to the rectangle tool. Uh, it just will draw it on an angle. To make a rectangle using this tool, click and drag to make a line. Then let go of your cursor and move out at an angle. Once you have the size rectangle you want, click a second time. The next shape on our toolbar is the ellipse tool. Just click and drag to make an ellipse. If I hold down my control button on my keyboard while I'm making this, it will make it a perfect circle. If I hold down my shift button while making it, the ellipse will come out from the center of the shape versus the corner. And if I hold down both the control and shift button at the same time, it will make a perfect circle from the center. If I switch to my shape tool, I can change this from a, an ellipse to a pie by dragging in the one node and sliding it around. I can adjust my pie by moving the node on the top or left side. It will also change it to my pie to an arc. However, I can change my circle up here at any time back into a pie or a full circle. I can also manually enter the angles if I need to be more specific. Under the ellipse tool, I have the three point ellipse. This is very similar to the ellipse tool, it just changes how you make it. To make an ellipse using this tool, I click and drag to make my diameter. Then I let go and move out from my angle to make my ellipse. Once you have the size ellipse you want, click a second time. Next on the toolbar, we have our basic shapes, which if I click this little black triangle, you can see what that includes. We have all sorts of shapes inside of here. Let's start with the polygon tool. I'm going to make a polygon. The default is normally three sides, but you can just type in how many sides you need. 
and hit enter. If I switch to my shape tool, you can see how the nodes will react when I move them around. In older versions of Corel, you would actually use the polygon tool in this way to make a star, but now Corel has a star tool. Let me make a star here. I'm going to hold down my control button so it's a perfect shape. Up in my property bar, I can change the number of points. Plus here, the sharpness of the points. If I switch to my shape tool, I can manually drag in and out the sharpness of the points. I use this tool pretty often. I can make a standard five or six point star plus if I up my points to a really high number and make them less sharp. I practically can get a circle with a sort of scalloped edge to it. I also have a complex star. I can change the number of sides and the sharpness. Plus I can manually drag the nodes around with my shape tool. I don't use this tool very often because of the crossing vector lines. Next I have graphs and spirals. These are fun to play around with but I rarely use them. These shapes down here have a bunch of different options. You can access the options by selecting one of these and then go into your property bar and you can see your different options. You'll find the heart shape under the basic shapes. Some of these are more editable than others. You can see that when I make a shape, you will have these very colorful nodes, which you can slide around to change the properties of the design. So now I have an entire page here of shapes. I have my object manager. You can see that they're all listed as their particular shapes. This is very important because as long as they are still shapes, they will have all the shape options up in the property bar. However, if I need to make more specific changes to a shape, all I need to do is convert it to curves. Object, convert to curves. You can see that once I do that, my rectangle has become a curve. Now I can use my shape tool to move specific nodes, add nodes, and change it in this way. However, by changing this to a curve, I lose my shape properties, like I can no longer drag in the corners to make them rounded. So don't convert your shapes into curves until you need to. Now all of these shapes that we have made will default as having no fill with a hairline CMYK outline. Let's go over some outline properties. To change the color of an outline, I simply select my object and then right click on any color from my palette. To change the color of fill, a regular left click on my color palette will change the fill. 
If I don't want an outline on an object, I can right click on the little X at the top of my palette, which means no color. It, that will remove the outline altogether. To add an outline in an object with no outline, I can right click on any color and it will add a hairline outline to that color. I can change the width of the outline up in my property bar. To get all of my outline properties, I simply double click on the color swatch of my outline and this will bring up my outline pen box. Here I can change the color. the width, this is set to points but I could change it to inches or millimeters if I'm more comfortable with that. I also have some great style options, like I could make a dotted line, I have a whole bunch of different variances on that. I can adjust my corners and line caps to rounded or beveled. New for X7, I can choose the position of an outline. In versions X6 and older, the position is always set to centered. I love this new feature in X7 as I would prefer to have most of my outlines set to the outside of my fill. However, I'm going to keep it at centered so it will be similar to working in X6 or lower. If you have a line that's not a closed shape, you can add arrows to the end of it. We'll get into some of these other options down here in the tutorial about text. The last thing I do when making an outline is select behind fill and scale with object. I have these selected 99% of the time that I'm working with outlines. Now that I have this outline on my shape, this is perfect for printing of any kind, screen printing, DTG, sublimation. However, if I'm vinyl cutting, I don't use outlines. When I look at this image in wireframe, you cannot see the outline. If I am vinyl cutting, I will use my contour cut tool instead of adding an outline. Let me go back real quick. I'm going to make this a solid line again. I'm going to take another shape over here, remove the outline by clicking on the no fill option with my right button. Then I go to my contour tool, which is underneath my drop shadow tool. Just click on my shape and drag outward to make my contour line. You can actually see the vector line when I'm creating it. Up in my property bar is where I can make my adjustments. I already have mine set to just one step. When you first use this, you'll probably be set to a higher step count, uh, which would end up looking something like this. So for a single outline, I just change this to one step. Here I can adjust the exact thickness if I need to be more precise. I can also change the corners to rounded or beveled. Here I can change the color. The difference between the outline and the contour can easily be seen within the wireframe view. The outline does not have a vector line to it, while the contour does. 
So I tend to use the outlines for printing and the contour for vinyl cutting. This has been an overview of shapes and outlines in CorelDRAW.